Hello, I am Johnny Emil Mortugan. I would be discussing to you about automated robots and military systems. So first, let us define what automated robots and military systems are. So, automated robots have what we call autonomy. And this autonomy has th three types. And the first type is the remote operation of the automated systems. The second one is the semi-automated or the automated systems for robots. And the third one is the fully auto autonomous robotic systems. So we will discuss more in depth with this later in the video. Meanwhile, the military systems are the systematic and the coordination approach from different branches of the military, for example, the army, the navy, and the air force, in where their operation requires so much of a stress that they need to use a systematic approach. On these statements, we can define that the main topic is about semi-autonomous robots to be used along with other military operators and assets so military robots are used for number one risky jobs and number two reducing manpower so the statement of having to be used for risky jobs the robots are used to replace the manpower on that can take on the high risk jobs like bomb disposals and uh, scouting where one's life is always at risk not knowing what where the enemy is and what the enemy is military robots are usually associated with the following categories ground aerial and maritime with some of the latest works in all three discussed in the paper including these oriented on the collective use of robots most military robots are still pretty dumb and almost all current and manned systems involve humans in practically every aspect of their operations. So let's return back to autonomy where I discussed to you three types, the remote, remote operation, the semi-autonomous and the fully autonomous autonomy. So they are what you call the degree of autonomy. So we have another which is called the control mode or the degree of human intervention which is as much the same as the autonomy where these features may require a different mode or can be operated in various modes so the first mode is the semi-automatic so this semi-automatic requires constant human intervention automated sub-process and what we call remote controlling equipment so this is equivalent equivalent to the number one, the controlled uh, con remote operated uh, autonomous uh, robot. So next is the automatic, which requires inter intervention in the sub process, basically automated automated complex automated systems, which is used in advanced industrial robots. So these are what we use in the industry and big factories which are used to build phones, laptops or detect some weird features that may turn the product out of the production line and so on and so forth. So the next one is the gradual autonomy. So gradual, gradual auto, autonomy requires a human intervention only in the main control parts of the process. So it is the start, stop, the identification, selection, decision making, and so on and so forth of unmanned aircrafts. So what we talked about earlier, the the UAVs or the unmanned aerial, ve aerial vehicles requires this gradual autonomy. So what 
it does is the operator first turns on the aircraft then the aircraft going to be piloted until it takes off then autopilot takes in where it goes to the specified coordinates on the on its GPS then once on its target the operator once takes control and surveys the surrounding taking pictures for the surveillance then returns the aircraft once again by using autopilot on the, in the coordinates of the base and then it lands it and shuts it down so in terms of the emerging application what i have researched for on all of my researches are three notable things so first of all is combat vehicles so if these automated robots are applied on combat vehicles it increases in, increases the chance that the soldiers that are fighting for our country may live for example they do not need to go scout first anymore risking their lives or getting killed later that their squad leader may know that if he did not come back the enemy is near so when using robots they will determine earlier if there are enemies or not so they can decide to take action and protect themselves earlier also it can also be used as a mine detectors where their vehicle will be protected against enemy mines or traps or booby traps any any concealed explosives that are harmful to our armed forces so the next one is the swarm technology so what's going to happen if all of the servicemen were replaced by robots so it's going to be a swarm technology and this swarm technology will be a system where many of the robots will be interconnected to each other and they would be interacting based on their own uh, set of intelligence network and be very strong in coordination and they are very precise since they are programmed like that so the next one is the very important in all of the armed forces the third one is the logistics so imagine if a single man can carry a 15 pound 20 pound weight on their back all day during an operation so what happens if they use a carrier dog so which we refer as the what do we call it again the robot mules so these robot mules will be very handy to the servicemen down the ground because these robot mules will definitely improve the range at which our operators operate and they will be less tired when engaged in a firefight so let's go on to the disadvantages that is given to us by automated robots for military systems so first of all uh, it's hard to keep the system secure why because there are always hackers everywhere in the world <clears throat> and you need to keep your the, the, your codes your decryptions another thing because if it's hacked it, the weapon will turn on to you and it will be used against you which will be a hindrance to all uh, all our armed forces and will disrupt the military system if the military is depending on the automated robots so the next one is the avoiding obstacles so not every robots can avoid obstacles there are some 
that can avoid which can jump on so for example a mountain terrain not every robot can climb a mountain terrain and which would be a problem if the logistics and the robot mules can climb a mountainous terrain because the forces will suffer so the next one is the interoperability and networks so it will be very hard to keep the interoperability within two different robots and you also have to keep them con keep them connected to the network so when you give a command to the robot it should be able to follow it so if it does not it compromises the mission so for example if a if a fighting robot shoots at enemy at an enemy that it should not and then the whole enemy base is alerted so the enemy is comprom the the mission is already compromised which means the secrecy or the surprise or any advantages that may be provided during the tactical operation will be discarded so the next one is the battery and power so this is a very hard topic since the use of these um, robots are requiring battery and power in which the battery technology of today is in a stagnant condition where our batteries are getting much less developed or is slowly developing and the power to weight ratio that a battery provides is still a hindrance to the robots meaning that if a robot is always lacking in power it cannot operate in its entire capability so with these disadvantages there are also several advantages number one is the cost of operations so when we see it a robot is definitely not expensive not very cheap i say that the robots cost around a million millions of dollars and the system of development or the develop developing systems of these robots cost around hundred hundreds and billions of dollars to be used so why do I include the cost of operation for the advantages number one is when a when an, a branch of army recruits a single operator they already spend a thousands of dollars from that that person it includes the gear the equipment and the food the insurance their monthly pay and when they die or when their rank increases their pay rises and there's also the pension for the family when in case the soldier is alive they have to pay the pension of a retired soldier until the said soldier also the said pension soldier will die also so I included it in the advantages provided by having an automated system for military systems so number two is the risk reduction for operators I already discussed this earlier in the video as the risk that is being faced by the operators are being lowered down when they are replaced by the automated robots in the field so next is the affordability so why is it so affordable to just hire a robot than a person it's also stated that 
it is affordable since their uh, robots are very cost efficient in their design as they do as what they are told and they almost never tire out unless they need to recharge their batteries and lastly before I end this video I need to talk about loss or what I what is called the lethal autonomous weapon systems so there is a widespread concern over the potential future development of loss or lethal autonomous weapon systems and there are calls for preemptive ban on their development there is no internationally agreed definition <clears throat> although for their purpose although for the purposes of the UN convention on certain conventional weapons or the CCW meeting in April 2015 laws were defined as being weapons which could autonomously select and engage targets the 2010 UK government stated that the operation of weapon system will always be under human control. The US government has said that operators of automated and autonomous weapon systems will always exercise an appropriate level of human judgment. However, a number of non-government organizations argue that terms such as human control and appropriate level of judgment are open to interpretation and need to be more clearly defined so which means the future development of the lethal autonomous weapon systems will be on hold and needs to be discussed furthermore between countries that has the power to do so and these autonomous weapon systems should be I think regulated in order to not destroy the balance of power between other countries so there is no specific international legislation on autonomous weapon systems however there are any system that cannot comply with the principles of the IHL or the International Humanitarian Law for example a system that cannot distinguish between a friend or foe should be immediately terminated so because of this the UK has, UK has argued that further legislation to ban laws is not needed however many argue that IHL is alone is not enough to prevent loss being developed because this is a very advanced and a very efficient killing machine for the military to use and is very advantageous but advantageous to different military military organizations that will use these automated military systems